Hello and welcome to my channel. Uh, this is actually my first video, but today we're going to be talking about how I passed my CompTIA A Plus Core 1 and Core 2 exams. And a little bit of background on uh, me is I'm new to the IT field. I just started my first um, sort of level one help desk type job in, the, in IT. Um, I started as a contractor for a few months and then I graduated into a full-time role um, where I work a hybrid schedule. It's pretty nice. I love the amount of flexibility that it affords me in my life. And I can't say that I wouldn't be here now without my A plus exam. A lot of what has helped me uh, get my foot in the door in the career has been because I have gone for the A plus and because I've gone for that, I've also gone on to get my network plus and uh, just recently I got my security plus and I'm just continuing to upskill and I think that knowledge uh, to an employer knowing that you are dedicated to learning and dedicating to pushing yourself to um, learn new technologies and how to interact with uh, customers and use end users uh, that is a big big deal let's go over some tips on what i did to pass the comptia a plus the first thing that i would recommend you to do when you're studying for a plus you need to devote a specific amount of time each week to studying you need to be disciplined with telling yourself okay this is how much i'm willing or able to study each week and sticking to that plan now a lot of people they work full-time jobs and maybe you're looking for a career change and you want to get into uh, IT, you want to get that entry level role and um, you, you know, you're busy and you, you got to make time for that. Um, but what I did, I, I worked a full time job, uh, but I, I found a way to devote about 10 to 15 hours per week to study. And that seemed to be my sweet spot. You know, you don't, you don't realize how much 10 to 15 hours is when you spend time doing a lot of downtime activities, time seems to fly, but 10 to 15 hours per week of studying goes a long way. The next thing I would recommend uh, for studying for the A plus is you don't have to take the core one or the core two in any specific order. So whatever you're more comfortable with, I feel like you should take first. I enjoy having that feeling of momentum. When I pass something, I get this feeling of adrenaline and I'm ready and you know, it, it, it fuels me to study more and give more effort into you know, the process of learning. It just, it just gives me that fire. And I'm, I feel like a lot of people are that way. So in my situation, I, I knew a lot more about computer hardware than computer software. So of course I took the core one first and um, you know, it, it didn't take too much effort, but there were, there was some things that I didn't know that I was, you know, happy to learn and, and actually uh, found a lot of in extra interest in technology that I didn't previously even know that I had. So as you can see here, we have the uh, list of certifications that I've attained this year. Uh, Obviously this uh, CompTIA A plus right there. I achieved this back in February. Um, then I continued and studying, uh, went to my network plus, then my security plus. And, and that kind of shows you what the momentum thing does. So there's a few different resources that I use for the CompTIA A plus to study. Um, one of which is the CompTIA Cert Master study materials. Uh, they provide you a lot of reading material to go through and there's various performance-based questions and other things like that to acquaint yourself with the material. I personally didn't use it quite as much as the other things that I use. I primarily focus on videos and hands-on type of learning to basically soak in information. And also a lot of the terms that you have to acquaint yourself with. I use a lot of flashcards, Quizlet, um, the Anki, uh, Anki flashcards are really good. This is a good way to acquaint yourself, but it's uh, in my opinion, it's a little bit more of a time sink than what you need. What I really use a lot here is the Professor Messer CompTIA material. If you haven't heard of him, please go check him out. He is a great resource for every certification that I have so far. I've used him primarily and he has not failed me. He is very thorough in how he covers the material. He does things like Q&As and he does study sessions 
Uh, he does live study sessions, and you can also go back and watch the recordings of all the study sessions that he's done. And it's just so, it's just an incredibly valuable resource to keep in mind when you're studying for your CompTIA Plus. And another good resource uh, to check out for the A Plus is the Jason Dion CompTIA A Plus Core 1 Complete Course and Practice Exam. This is an incredible teacher as well. He's he's very thorough. Um, he, he's very passionate about what he's talking about. You get a lot of value for the $90 that you spend on this course. Um, and you maybe you luck out and your organization provides you to me for free. Definitely make sure and check to see if that's a thing because that was the case for me. My college actually had Udemy for free for all students. I watched all of Jason Dion's A plus core one and core two material and it definitely helped. He also has a practice exam that you can do that also uh, acquaint yourself with the verbiage and how uh, CompTIA exams are basically worded and what to expect. And it's worth noting here that CompTIA Cert Master also has a practice exams, but they are an incredible resource as well. Basically the same exact verbiage that you can expect from the CompTIA A plus exam. So there you have it guys. Those are my study tips for the CompTIA A plus. Anyone can do it. Um, you don't have to have any prior knowledge. As long as you have the ambition to study and to learn, you are good to go. When you're ready and you feel like you're ready to take on the exam, schedule that exam, whether it's in person at a test center or online through a proctor, go for it. Well, have a good one, everyone, and good luck on your exam.